what's up guys thank you for clicking on the video so yes you have bought the night drive tv uh triplets kit as uh, we sometimes call it basically the sleepy eye headlight kit with the triple uh halos on each side which they may be square they may be circular or you may actually have a kit that isn't actually released yet um, but you're still using this install video i'm sure you won't be affected really adversely in any way this video will apply to a number of different kits um, so first of all, I want to thank everybody for participating in the project, for supporting Night Drive TV, of course, always subscribing to the channel, seeing new products, and being a member of the Night Drive TV Corvette Enthusiast Group on Facebook. This is a place for a lot of detailed questions or upcoming insights into new products and things like that. Please join that if you can. As always, I want to thank everybody uh, out there in the Corvette community for allowing me to design something, provide you with uh, obviously a kit that was all designed in-house. Um, we do uh, produce these in the sense that I manufacture all the plastics, all assembly occurs here. Um, basically, a lot of it's made in the United States. We do outsource the pods and things, but this is a very much a grassroots kind of small business um, creation. And uh, you guys that have bought it, and supported that um, obviously it allows me to reinvest and make more products and things like that in the future so you know of course i have tried to make this install process also very uh, easy for you guys so you know i want even somebody who is of minimal you know mechanical skills to be able to get through this and install the kit and so this up updated video really was a part of that because as i evolved this kit over about a year of shipments um, we've made multiple improvements on multiple fronts not everything that i've told everybody about but the beauty of the way i manufacture these is that i can always implement small changes small improvements small updates things to make the experience either in production or on your end installation easier Easier. And so that's why uh, a new video for install was uh, became required because I have made enough updates now that the old install video doesn't apply. So if you've received your kit about mid-July uh, and it came with black stops instead of the metal stops, um, that's going to be the indicator that this is the video you need to follow. Um, the stops were revised to make the install much easier for you guys and not have the adjustable heights and things like that. Everybody should be at the exact same height with the new stop system. It is new. It is, uh, I don't want to say experimental, but it is something that, you know, just I don't expect any problems and I don't think we'll have any issues, but um, it is obviously out into the world and you guys are going to have to feedback if you have any problems or inconsistencies. That being said, um, I just want to say I appreciate everybody. I look forward to seeing you at events like Carlisle SEMA or the Bash in 2023 at the Corvette Museum. Um, and I'm working on a lot of different products. So as always guys, I appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get started with the install. And we're going to start with the driver's side. We're going to go step by step. Don't allow the length of this video to make you believe that this is going to be a very complex install. I'm just very paced with the video. I've made everything start and stop. I've tried to be as clear as possible on everything to reduce any problems you may have with the install. So don't think that by the length of this video or the number of steps involved that it's super complicated. This is actually a pretty basic kit. If you have good skills, I expect that this will probably take you just about right on pace with the video to do the first side and then the second side you're probably going to fly through pretty quickly um, for those of you who are meticulous and very careful i'm sure it might take you a little longer but either way the first side is going to be the unknown or difficult part the second side will go much quicker so with that said let's get started okay so our first step is we are going to remove the negative battery cable of course this is usually an eight millimeter Step two here, you can pause, but we are going to remove these rear Torx fasteners. This is a T15. Uh, each section ahead, the, you can pause in between, uh, but these are two fasteners in the back. Step three, we're going to remove the boot and manually raise the headlight by turning counterclockwise. The boot slips right off. We're going to manually just turn this, and it takes a bit of turning, but it will come up. So we're going to expose these Phillips heads, and that's going to be step four. And that's going to allow us to remove the bezels. So we're going to get this Phillips head here. Take this one off. There's one on the other side. And then there's one in the rear that's kind of hard to find, but it's back there. Don't forget about it. We're going to pull the bezel forward, spread the side slightly, 
rotate it downward, and then out it comes. So step six, we're going to remove the T15 fasteners on each side of the headlight cover. There's going to be one on each side at this point, and then there's the two in the rear you've already removed. Step seven, we're going to remove the top cover and manually lower the headlight a little bit. So we're going to remove the inner 10 millimeter bolt from the rear with an extension. And you can see how I'm getting to this uh, little extension with a ratchet that'll let you get to that. Step nine, you're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench and a T27 bit. So a thin boxed end wrench works best here because of that top cover can get in your way. But just hold that bit in place. Uh, we're going to Pull forward on the top stud and the support the headlight in your hand and swivel it downward. You can see how we pulled forward here. It will swivel down on that bottom swivel point, which is the adjuster. And we're going to unplug the headlights, remove the pair of 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to remove the factory headlight. Okay, guys, it was this point in the video uh, that you would begin to disconnect the armature uh, inside of the headlight and prepare to install the metal stops. Like I said, if your kit comes now with these stops here, you will continue in this video. If you have metal stops and you were just now installing your kit and you've gotten into this install video, you're going to have to go into the description of this video or I'm going to actually attach the link that you can click if it's there uh, that you can go to the appropriate install video. But if you have metal stops, you cannot continue in this video at this point. You must have these stops right here. So now we're going to tap for the halo function. So in the rear, uh, this is going to be the yellow wire from the headlight kit, but I'm, I'm using a red wire. But this is going to be your yellow wire. You're going to insert all the way. And then this is going to basically tap into the uh, copper inside the insulation. You're going to clamp it down until it clicks. And there's going to be little fasteners here that clip. And then the front's going to be open, and that's what you're going to use to tap power from your car. And so you're going to see you're going to use the brown wire. And that's the three-plug uh, setup that goes to the uh, basically the DRL in front. So you're going to tap that brown wire. So to be more specific, this is the three pin plug that comes from underneath your corner light. The middle wire is the brown wire that I'm referring to. Or as you can see in my car, I have the brown wire tapped in the basically the side marker parking light. And it's also a brown wire. You're, you're basically tapping 12 volt here. So now you're going to plug in the high and low beam. L is marked on the plugs. And so take note of that. And um, we're going to go ahead and I sit the headlight down in here. It's easiest. And um, I'm going to make sure everything's out of the way because we're going to do a test once they're plugged in. And so you don't want anything moving to hit your light. So test now because it saves time from later. We're going to go into the parking light mode. Your parking light should be on and all your halos should be lit just like this, all three. And that's if, make sure both your headlights are plugged in. Now with headlights on, because we don't have the relay, that's high, that's low. Low is going to be the two outers, high is on the inner. Everything should work normally at this point. So if you have function like I have here, you're going to skip ahead to the time I'm going to show on the screen here. If you do have problems, we're going to go into some troubleshooting right now. So typically what people are seeing here is that one of the halos, either the high halo by itself or the twin low beam halos are not lighting up all the way. That's going to be an indicator that either the high plug or the low plug needs flipped. And this was GM's uh, issue. They were all random. So there was no way to do this exactly correctly. So what I'm going to show here is you're going to basically, instead of the tab, you're going to flip it over and you're going to plug it in. If the polarity issue was the problem, then you will see those halos light properly and those center beams will also be lit properly. Uh, the improper polarity basically makes them both dim. So this should repair your issue. It is possible you have multiples wrong. So be sure to be thorough about this step to figure out your problem. If you still have no halos unlit, if, they, if you have no halos lit at all, then you're gonna wanna check that wiretap. 
If you want to repin these, you can use a small flat blade like a screwdriver and pull a tab back and pull that pin out. And you can basically flip the pins if you really want the tab uh, and locking function. But most people, it will stay without the tab. But if you want to complete that, you can. So now we are going to install the optional resistor if you've chosen that. And it's going to be simple. As long as you have proper function, you're going to basically install this. Plug this in in between the low beam plug in the car and the low beam side on the headlights. And you're going to want to be sure that this orange uh, heat sink does not touch anything because it will get very hot and it will melt whatever it touches. So zip tie it out of the way basically by suspending each side of the wires or find a place to secure it. So if you have a 97 to 2000, you've used the long shouldered bolt, you're going to use a regular bolt in this lower section. If you're 01 to 04, you're going to use that shouldered bolt uh, here. And so we're going to do the lower first. I'm going to push it in and attach the uh, lock washer and nut on the back side. Now we're going to do the top. Uh, this is just another one of your bolts, lock washer, then nut. And just, you know, finger tighten those. And then we're going to get, uh, I'm going to use a small wrench. You can see how small of a wrench. This is not about a, a bunch of torque. This is about compressing the lock washers only. You can see how I'm holding uh, the wrench. I'm not putting any big force into this. This is very light force. And I'm showing this to express to you how little torque is needed. All we're, all we're trying to achieve is uh, the ability to compress those lock washers so this setup won't loosen. We're not trying to crack plastic and, and squish things. So as you feel the resistance rise, you'll know, and you can see here even with my thumb, like I can, I can feel it, it's snug, good to go. And that's what it should look like fastened. So with nothing fastened on the other side and just one side attached, we want to be careful not to torque or apply any forces to that outer upper side of the bracket. So just be careful during this phase to support it with your hand. We're going to go to the next step. This step is the most important. Do not force anything that doesn't want to go. People were somehow imparting a lot of stress and two people did break uh, the kit. It will only delay your install. You can see how easily this moves, but those two nuts that are installed in bolts and that top portion, you have to watch that they don't touch anything and do not push that top bolt in. Uh, you want to go to the outer shoulder first. Where I have my fingers, do not push that in. Leave it like it is. And you're going to just support it with your left hand and you're going to take your uh, other bolt. We're going to install it from the front side. And I'm going to show you, you're going to go into this upper hole. There should be no resistance to align with this. Uh, if there is, your adjuster is too far back. You can bring that adjuster forward, uh, but you should be able to contact it. But do not force anything. A uh, lock washer, uh, then a nut. And I'm zoomed in here so you can see. So this is attached to your left right adjuster on this side. And so if you are having any issues reaching that, you can uh, adjust that outer adjuster uh, with a quarter inch socket or uh, an E8 Torx, which I'll show you here ahead. But I'm able to get to it and see this is the last step here. Uh, you should not have to force anything. If you are, you're going to break the outer side here. So last step, I'm going to push this in. And this is going to bring everything together. And then I'm going to tighten up that inner side. And I'm going to use, again, that thin box and wrench. And I'm going to support it a little bit so I can take up and just kind of spin it with my finger. And then I'm going to go ahead and just snug it up the same way, just compressing the lock washer only, not trying to impart any huge torque. Nothing is forced here. Everything should go together. If, if not, like I said, bring that outer, uh, that inner adjuster forward. So we're going to tighten the top fastener again with the T27 and that wrench. We're just going to snug this back up. Okay, so now we're going to grab our stops and we're going to notice uh, we're going to be looking for the one with the O. As you can see, there's an O here and the indented side is going to face the windshield. So O on the fender, indented side to the windshield. Now we're going to manually lower our headlights. So in this shot here, I still have the, the cover on. This is a different shot, but I'm pointing to these spots, two tabs. They're going to have white rubber stops on them. You're going to have to pull them off, but this is where we're going to mount the new black stop. 
So go ahead and just watch those screws sticking down. But we're going to go ahead and put that stop in the O by the fender and the indent facing the windshield, and they're going to slide over. Those screws could be in the way. If you have any difficulty sliding it on, take a flat blade screwdriver, just kind of open it up a little bit. I made these tight so you don't lose them. So with your stops in place, you can go ahead and re-raise your headlights again. So here is the approximate appearance you want for the proper aiming. Yours are probably going to be pointing out to the side a bit. This is the adjuster that fixes that. And then this adjuster here is the up-down. Yours are going to be aimed down. You're going to want to bring them up. I use this particular gear wrench ratchet. It's an E8. But this is about what you want things to look like approximately. Like I said, you can use this quarter-inch ratchet. It does work on the outside very easily, but it's a little bit tight going from the underneath. And just watch your arm hitting the headlight assembly. So now we're going to install the relay that you've got both sides done. The second side will go much more, uh, more quickly, but this relay will give you the all six high function. First, you're going to do the power side here. Um, you're just going to remove that nut and put this in place. The next ground location is behind the battery. I do want you to scuff sand the back of the nut for good ground contact. Everything's coated in these cars and a good ground is necessary for the halos or the uh, function of the relay. Uh, next, you want to install these brass fuse taps from your hardware bag. Now, they fit around pretty well, but the bottom of the fuse has kind of a V shape. So it's going to be a little tough to get the, the fuses pushed back down in all the way, but they will work. So you're going to install the fuses back into the number 9 and 10 location. So here you're going to attach the black wire to number 9 and the red wire to number 10. And I'm going to show you this a different way. That's the red wire on number 10 and the black wire at number 9. So something I want to bring your attention to is this uh, spade connector. Uh, some supplier uh, issues have led to this connector being large. So you may have to use uh, pliers or something to pinch those down just a bit to be sure that you make good solid contact with the brass tap. It's going to be imperative to make the relay work. So we're going to do a function test here, and this function test is going to be for the people that do not have the resistor installed. Parking lights, this is what you should see. Headlights, low beams, this is what you should see, two outers. High beams with the relay, all six. Back to parking lights and off, this is what will happen. The doors won't retract. So what you need to do is this procedure. From headlights, go to high beams, then shut them off from there and they'll retract. This is due to the headlight control module wanting to see a larger amp draw shift, but if you have the resistor installed, they will retract from the low beam position. Alrighty guys, so I hope your install went okay. Um, this is, uh, it's about midnight. I've been working on this uh, video. It's August 4th, uh, 2022. And so if you've gotten your system installed, uh, you can go ahead and button everything back up, put your headlight covers and tops back on. Um, and do your function test. Obviously, your heights should be consistent. Uh, give me some feedback if you have any issues with that, but uh, they should be consistent. I will put the measurement here of what I would expect from the top of the frame rail up to the top of the headlight cover. Um, and so uh, this is kind of the finisher at this point. We don't have bezels available for these. Uh, it's something I'm actually working on right now, uh, deciding whether we should do injection molds, but people have taken their factory uh, bezels. They've kind of cut them here and they've cut them here. And then they had to do a little trim across the top because it kind of gets angry looking. So uh, they've done that. These are super cheap on eBay. Um, I got these for $39. Um, but obviously at this stage, I really hope to have uh, the bezels available for these, the rounds and the owl eyes, which we have here, which I haven't shown. Uh, these are going to have a little something else going on so I don't think you can tell by this but these are very high quality but they're a little bit heavier um, this is going to stress the mechanism a little bit so we'll not worry about that right now for the install video so I hope everything went well join the night drive tv corvette enthusiast group on facebook if you have any questions or concerns now let's just uh, wrap this up with a jiggling people have had some issues so various mileage cars uh, your gears can have some wear on them. Uh, the mechanism uh, that, that operates the doors can be loose. Uh, as long as your kit is tight, you're not gonna get any jiggling um, unless you have component wear 
uh, adjuster wear, uh, things like that. So join the group, talk to other people that have resolved these issues. Uh, but this kit will not bounce or move if your car is good and the install is good. There's not going to be any jiggling or moving, so you won't have any problems there. Um, and like I said, just join the group. Contact me on Instagram, Facebook. I usually can get back to people pretty quickly. So that's it. I appreciate you installing and posting pictures all over the internet and helping me out. That, that is always a great thing. Allows me to reinvest and make new parts ahead. So. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thank you very much for supporting Night Drive TV and the project here of uh, just building some cool parts for the C5. I'll catch you on the next one.